We are entering one of the biggest productivity booms in history. And if you aren't prepared, then you might miss out on a lot of value. So today, I'm going to help you get ahead of the game by explaining the power of AI agents and how they're going to disrupt every industry. And if that isn't enough, I'll also show you examples of some workflows I have personally created that give me insights into my YouTube analytics before diving into the incredible future of this technology. So let's check it out. So first of all, let's take a look at what an AI agent actually is. It's effectively a program designed to perceive its environment, plan its actions, and then perform them autonomously in order to achieve its goal. Now, if a human has agency, it means they have control over their life and the decisions they make. Of course, it's not like you just have agency or you don't. It tends to be more along the lines of the more responsibility and control that you have over the actions that you take, the more agency you have. And it's similar for AI agents, where they're able to act without the constant need for human intervention. And of course, not all AI agents have the same capabilities. For example, the most basic type are called simple reflex agents. Now, these are pre-programmed to make decisions based on their current sensory input, and they don't store memory. However, on the other end of the spectrum, we have learning agents, which are able to store memory of their past actions and actually use it to learn and better adapt to unfamiliar environments. So why are AI agents said to be so impactful? Well, an analogy that helped me understand was when Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, described them as AI workers or AI employees. It's the idea that you'll be able to set up these agents to automate parts of your work that would normally require either you or another human to do. Now, I'm of the belief that most corporate jobs would generally be better done by AI. Not only can they operate more efficiently, but they actually work 24-7. And to be honest, I feel like the reason we use human labor to begin with is just because there's no better alternatives. So at the moment, if you want to start a business, you generally have to get a large team of people, human workers, to actually get the work done. You have to get a marketing team, a sales team, a production team, and so on. Well, as AI agents become more intuitive and capable, we're going to see these parts of the jobs become automated so that we don't have to rely so much on the human workers. Now, while all of this might sound really futuristic, the truth is AI agents are already here. And to be honest, they're making a real impact even today. To give you a concrete example, I've gone and built two workflows that automate one of the most tedious parts of running a YouTube channel, which is analyzing analytics. All right, so here's the first workflow I set up that sends me a weekly report of my YouTube analytics every Sunday at 3 p.m. I've basically programmed it to fetch me a few different metrics and have it email me weekly. At first, you might think that this weekly report workflow is a simple reflex agent due to the fact that it can run autonomously, gather data, and then format it and send it to me via email, all without intervention. But here's the catch. This doesn't actually count as an AI agent. Now, it took me a hot minute to understand why it doesn't count as a simple reflex agent, but allow me to explain. A simple reflex agent is the lowest level of agentic AI. It decides its actions purely based on its current perception of the environment. Unlike more intelligent agents, it doesn't have memory, so it can't learn or improve over time. It simply has a set condition and then performs an action when that condition is met. A popular example would be a smart thermostat, which can detect the temperature of its environment, the condition, and respond immediately by heating up the action. The weekly report functions in a similar way to this, where it triggers an action when a certain condition is met. In this case, when it reaches a certain time, it'll fetch my data, compile it, and then email it to me. However, time is not treated as a dynamic input. There's no continuous perception. For it to be agentic, it would need to constantly monitor or react to changes in its environment. But instead, it's triggered at a scheduled time and sends an email that follows a very strict template that I had to program in, and it won't ever deviate from this. However, I can make this an agentic workflow by adding this AI agent node right before it sends me the email. If I give it the instruction to analyze the data before it sends it to me, I can have it customize the email and provide me with a much more detailed and dynamic response. Now, this is agentic as it proves it's capable of perceiving its environment, which in this case are the analytics, and then it reasons and decides what additional information to add before it's emailed to me. On top of this, it can even have memory assigned to it so that it can remember past reports and then compare it to the new one. If it notices that one week you have a low number of views, it could provide you with advice as to how you can improve. But while that workflow is quite useful at keeping me up to date on a weekly basis, it's very limited in that it can't provide me with data outside of that time frame. So as well as this weekly report workflow I built, I've also been working on this agentic workflow that can dynamically fetch me different analytics based on what I request. This one comprises two AI agents, one to fetch analytics and one to summarize them. I actually really like using this one, as I can ask it to fetch me specific metrics within a given time frame, and it'll provide me with the insights and recommendations. For example, I'll ask it to fetch me my views and likes in the last 20 days. As you can see, it provided me with a detailed description of these metrics within the time frame that I actually specified. It also provided me with advice on how I can improve my content. 
It even highlighted that my view to like ratio is quite low. So if you're getting value, then please don't forget to leave a like. It helps you a lot. Anyway, not only can I be very specific, but I can also be broad and ask you to fetch all of my channel analytics within the last year. It'll lay it all out nicely, compare and correlate the data, and provide me with recommendations as to what I can improve on or what I'm doing well in. I actually find this really helpful, and there are so many other features I could add that would improve it even more. For example, I could give it memory to enable ongoing conversations that flow smoother, or I can ask follow-up questions or for comparisons of past data. Of course, we do have YouTube Studio, which provides a lot of this data with a fairly decent user interface, but what I like about this is how specific you can be and how easy it is to get the data. Just being able to ask how many subscribers have I gained in the last 50 days and have it not only give you the number, but also provide you the insights to how it correlates with other data is just incredible. So I'm not just gonna sit here and pretend like this was easy to set up and as a beginner, you'll be able to do this in 10 minutes and you'll be a professional because there's a lot to learn. You know, there's a lot of coding I ran into and I'm not the best coder in the world. So what I did was I used ChatGPT and I would go back and forth, feeding it screenshots of my workflow, telling it, kind of what my idea was, and then it would help me with like a step-by-step -step guide or, you know, big blocks of code that I could just paste into the, the, the nodes that I was using, right? So if you do have some cool ideas and you're looking to get into all of this, then I strongly recommend using things like ChatGPT just to help you with the process because it would save you a lot of time, stress, and honestly, the results will be better, generally speaking. Unless you're already a professional at coding, then do your thing. But yeah, use the tools to your advantage. Now, an important thing I noticed is that the system prompt you give the AI agent plays a huge role in making the workflow function properly. For example, YouTube's API documentation only provides you with the metric for estimated minutes watched, when typically you want to see this in hours. In order to convert this to hours, I can't just ask it to give me watch hours in the last 20 days, as it won't be able to fetch any metric. So what I did was prompt a fetch agent to retrieve estimated minutes as normal. And then, of course, I prompted the summarizer agent to do the conversion when needed. And as you can see, it worked. So if you want to actually use these workflows yourself, then I'll leave a link in the description for you. I'm sure this workflow could be a lot more efficient, and there are millions of other creative ways you can set workflows up in order to achieve your own goals. But I hope this helped you get a better understanding as to how these AI agents operate, and hopefully it helped inspire some ideas of ways in which you could set up automated workflows, agentic or not, to help streamline parts of your work and improve your productivity. This is where I believe AI agents will shine. I mentioned before how businesses will use this to automate large parts of their workforce. Now, this power isn't just limited to businesses, it will extend to the individual as well. So imagine a world where AI agents can handle near enough anything, from managing your finances to running a business, while you focus on creativity and innovation. There are many people, myself included, that believe through the power of this technology, we will start to see the first one person, billion dollar businesses begin to emerge. Where you typically have to employ people to get work done, you can now automate so much of it. We we'll soon be able to just set up AI agents to get all of this streamlined. But then even outside of business, we're gonna see this affect pretty much every single area of life. For example, personal productivity and life management will see massive increases in efficiency. Imagine having a life agent that can track your habits over time and, and provide personalized recommendations and feedback as to how you can improve in certain areas like fitness or education. Agents that adapt to your habits, keep track of your learning progress, and then tailor the education or fitness program to your ever-changing skill level. There are so many possibilities with AI agents, and to be honest, that isn't even the best bit. Everything we've discussed up until now has been focused on digital agents. However, even today, we have physical agents such as humanoid robots and self-driving cars. That's right, these are forms of AI agents. As they perceive their environment, dynamically decide on the best actions to take, and then learn over time. One of the biggest examples of this is Tesla and their full self-driving. These have collectively gathered billions of miles of data, all of which contribute to the impressive driving ability they're currently capable of. Where they once required constant intervention, they can now drive for hundreds of miles without any human intervention and are able to adapt to unfamiliar environments due to the way they're trained using computer vision and machine learning. Tesla's Optimus bots are another form of AI agent that learns like this. They act within an environment and are trained using techniques like reinforcement learning, which is essentially when they're rewarded or penalized for the actions they make, and over time, they learn which actions are correct. So it's only a matter of time before these agents start to work their way into the workforce, but as well, our own homes. Scary? Maybe. But personally, I'm extremely excited. We've come so accustomed to the idea that working the majority of your life just to survive is the norm. And when something comes along and disrupts your way of living, it tends to be a bit scary. But personally, I'm hopeful that this is going to enter us into an era of prosperity, an era of abundance, and an era where humans will just be able to work on things that they actually care about.
spend their time doing things they actually want to do. Now, if you enjoyed this topic, then I'd really recommend checking out this video where I go into how Tesla is crafting this bright future. Or my last video where I go into 10 technological developments that are happening in 2025. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.